So there was a Pew Research poll, and we're saying that two-thirds of Americans now view China unfavorably. So it's 66% of Americans, and that's up from 47% viewed them unfavorably two years ago. So that's a pretty dramatic increase, and it's fairly bipartisan, too. So 72% of Republicans view them unfavorably, and 62% of Democrats have an unfavorable view. And then I have one more interesting one, and that is uh, 9 in 10 Americans now view China as a threat, with uh, 62% viewing China as a major threat. Wow. That's 9 in 10. That's like everybody. Wow, that is, that's amazing. Wow, good stuff. Thanks, Sam. I, I appreciate that. So, folks, um, boy, there's the campaign right there. That's what it's going to be about. And, look, this is why, you know, we— uh, President Trump will be ramping up based on this poll alone is going to be ramping up his rhetoric. And I don't want to say rhetoric. It's not really rhetoric, rhetoric, because the beauty of President Trump and the scary part for China about President Trump is they know he means it. They tried for two years to back him down and he wouldn't. They got sanctions. They paid the they paid the um, tariffs, billions of dollars. None of that. They tried everything they could. The only thing they're hoping for now is that our economy uh, totally tanks. Doesn't matter. Because here's the problem. And I've, I don't know. I hope you remember me saying this, folks. You probably have already given the credit to somebody else. But do you remember me saying uh, during the, uh, this whole, in this whole election cycle, I said, here's why President Trump is in a perfect position because President Trump is in a situation where he's extremely believable because of all the promises he kept. So when President Trump says, that's it, I'm done with China. That's it. You know, we're going to tariff them. We're going to put 35% tariff on everything they do. That's it. And if you're an American company and you're working over there, you better get out because you're going to have, and people know that he's going to do it. People know. They don't have any, they make no bones about it. And, And China can't do anything. And Biden is not going to be able to say one word against China. What's he going to say? Anything he says, Trump's going to come back and say, wait a minute, your son took all this money from China. You're best friends with China, buddy buddies with China. You love the communist regime. So um, it's going to be a really good place for the president to be from a campaign perspective, but it's going to be a really good place for Americans to be right now because the president, Congress, is going to get the backing of the American people in, you know, taking care of China. And I don't don't mean war. I'm not talking about a war, but I'm talking about doing whatever is necessary to maybe sanction China, maybe just impose stiffer tariffs on China. But I think that my position has been When everybody is screaming, the left is screaming, President Trump is bringing the Cold War back. Okay? And exactly why is that bad? Well, you know, we don't want to be, we don't want our kids hiding under their desk at school. Okay? Why why is that? I, I understand. Why is that bad, though? Why is it bad? So there is a, communist root women. There's a ruthless, doesn't care a lick about human rights, communist regime that at any cost, even the loss of a a couple million people, we have this regime that wants nothing but economic dominance and military dominance of the world. Not of America, of the world. They've made no bones about it, and they've never recanted on any of that. They want military dominance and and, and economic dominance 
throughout the world. That is their end game. That is their goal. It's all they care about. We have an opportunity to see that that doesn't happen. Because that is going to be very, very, very difficult for that to happen without America. Now, one would hope when we see these polls, this is a Pew Research poll, 72%, 66% of Americans are becoming more anti-China. Nine out of 10 are, you know, not uh, favorable about what we, you know, China and what measures we might take. They're favorable. Nine out of 10 say we we should do what we need to do. Look, so now I don't understand how all of the Eurozone can't be in the exact same place. They have lost from a percentage perspective the same amount of lives as everybody else. Spain right now, uh, uh, the number one country for COVID-19 along, and, and the number one country for deaths right now. And then uh, Italy is now second. But when you look at the numbers throughout the Eurozone, it's devastating. It's a devastating problem. And so I understand that this is a pretty much spineless socialist society. They don't want their police officers to have guns. They want everybody to love everybody. They want to love everybody into submission. They want to open their borders up. Come on in. We're all one people and one country, and we want to take all of you in, and we don't care about Sharia law in this part of the city, and we're going to have Sharia uh, members in our parliament, and we're awful. We just want to love the world. We're going to love everybody so much that, It's just going to be so much peace that it's going to be unbelievable. Ah, come on. So have they had a wake-up call yet? So if they would have a wake-up call, now they're afraid of retaliation. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, President Xi, did I? Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't really mean that. They're really concerned because they don't want retaliation because they're afraid it might disturb their incredibly peaceful existence with their open borders. They don't want that disturbed. So I don't know that they're going to get on board, but maybe if we take a hard stand that the Eurozone will see no reason not to get on board. And if the Eurozone gets on board, then China is done. They're going to be a third world country in about four years. So they're finished. I mean, the Eurozone is the largest economic zone in the world. It's not America. It's not China. It's not Japan. It's the Eurozone. All that, all those G, all that GDP and all the the wealth in those twenty seven countries. That's the largest trading partner for China. What would they do? I don't know what they'd be done. They'd be done. They have nothing. They'd be forced to deal with terrorist nations and third world countries that they could rule and control. And they may build up their armies by doing that and their military might, but that's about it. They're not going to have any economic power. Hey, remember to click the subscribe button right here on the screen. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when new content is added. And more importantly than anything, you don't want to miss all three live hours of financial issues every day from nine to noon. And you can watch it on FISM.TV. That's FISM.TV.